Okay, coronavirus. I don't really like recording videos about current affairs. I think it can be because we can get sucked into this distraction. But yeah, a few people have asked me, you know, my views on the coronavirus. And yesterday <laughs> I recorded a video on the coronavirus. And then in the afternoon, I went to buy lunch in a local supermarket. Of course, there was thousands of people queuing up to buy toilet rolls. So <laughs> I was faced with it head on. So here we are. So this is my suggestion in listening to this video. It would be best to be centered, so to be in your body and from midway down your thighs to open your energy field. Be aware of an opening as you work your way up to your genitals, to your hips, to your tummy, your solar plexus, your lower chest, your upper chest, your throat and above to be open. This is not intended as a, a video about statistics or any of that kind of thing. I'm not getting into that. Okay, so to, to start, some of you may know uh, and some of you may not, but maybe three years ago I did a lot of practice around roulette. And roulette is the wheel in a casino. It has 36 numbers and a zero, so there's 37 numbers. The ball can drop on any of 37 numbers. And I spent about a year and a half with a lot of meditation, cold showers, focus, and a lot of training and practice to, to learn to see what number the ball would land on. And after probably just over a year, I got my, my results up to around between 80 and 90%, we'll say the 85% that I could see what number the ball was going to land on. And then I had the idea to choose a number and to see, can I move to the reality where the ball lands on that number? And I got the same results, around 85%. So what I learned from that was the ball lands on every number. The ball lands on 36 numbers sorry, 37 numbers. We unconsciously steer our reality to live in the reality where the ball lands on, say, the non-winning number or the number near our number where we get a little bit excited or now and again to land on the number that we choose to live in that excitement. So if there's no such thing as time, this was a, it was just a huge um, shift for me and a huge learning experience to realize that all potentials happen. It depends where we're going. Now, there's two sides to this. As you know, I don't have much time for them. I don't want to name names, but the manifestation world or community, because I think a lot of it is about people trying to escape pain. So there's two potentials. There's the potential that we can, we're can we steering our consciousness to the reality we choose. And then there's also the potential that we're on a trajectory. Now, I think both of these are true. So the trajectory is the higher, greater arc of our spirit's journey, which is not one lifetime. As I've said before, imagine, the, imagine a 100,000 piece jigsaw you are, this lifetime is one piece. So if you look at that one piece, it makes no sense whatsoever. You might see a bit of color. But as you gather a few pieces around it, you might see, ah, oh, this is, a, maybe it's a boat. Do I see water? Do I see clouds? But within your little world and your little life, of course, you can choose to have breakfast or not have breakfast or go to the shops or not go to the shops or disinfect everything you own <laughs> or not. So there's, there's two pieces at play here. And sometimes that 100,000 piece jigsaw has a lot more force and a lot more direction than you want to accept. You know, people dying, people getting cancer, relationships ending, jobs ending. 
you know, maybe that's not in the plan. You had a plan. I'm going to buy a house. I'm going to move house. I'm going to have kids. I'm going to get married. I'm going to do these nice things. And something else intervenes as part of that arc and that trajectory. The ego can battle. So we have a choice. Ultimately, the choice is, as I see it, we are the cylinder. Be the cylinder and allow consciousness to flow through us as much as possible, as freely as possible, without trying to fight it or hold on to it. But when we don't get the relationship we want or the kids that we want or the partner, or he's doing this, he's fucking doing that, she's doing this or that, you know, the bank, the job, the whatever the coronavirus we then think this isn't part of my plan i was i was manifesting in my best life <laughs> manifesting in inning so on the coronavirus is it possible that there are infinite potentials and that we can live in any of those infinite potentials and is it possible that our higher self has us on an arc anyway so we can either battle to try to fucking manifest the potential that we want or we can surrender and go with the flow and be in tune with the unfolding, facilitate the unfolding. We could be all dead next week, you know. So any of these mass events, personally, I wouldn't take this as scientific advice or guidance around your kids or the elderly. Anything for me that is in the mainstream media, that's mass consciousness. Was it Voltaire who said, uh, I don't know if it was Voltaire who said, whenever you find yourself on the side of the majority, it's time to pause and reflect. So instinctively, I don't really go with the majority. That's why I have a very strange YouTube channel and, and posts on Instagram. And uh, not many people pay much attention to me because I just, just do my own thing. So I don't get swept along in the fear hysteria of terrorists or school shootings or vaccines or lack of vaccines or any of these things. I'm not interested. Fear naturally, sim quite simply, closes our doors to information, to receiving our own inner guidance. As I've said many times, I don't watch loads of spirituality videos. I don't think I've watched, I think I've watched one video on the coronavirus, which was about three or four weeks ago. Uh, I don't think I've read a single article about it. I've seen the fear and... Uh, you know, and clicking through radio stations, I've heard the, the fear, the phone in shows at times. And to be honest, I've, I laugh out loud. That's my instinctive reaction that I, I find this funny. Um, there's a, an outtake from a documentary on DMT. Uh, I think the documentary is called DMT, the spirit molecule. And there's a guy I can't think is, uh, of his name. I think he's a Peruvian shaman, Domingo. The name comes to mind. And there's an outtake from the documentary and in the outtake which you can find loads of outtakes on YouTube he says you know I changed so much from experiencing and working with DMT so DMT for those who don't know is a, is a chemical that's formed in our in our own bodies in our own minds uh, it's produced when we die it's produced when we dream and it gives us visuals it takes us places and there are theories that buy a lot of our processed food of which I eat a lot to survive uh, and fluoride of which I don't drink Um that that stuff calcifies our pineal gland and stops DMT. Uh, so there's conspiracy around that. But Domingo says, if that's his name, you know, he says after working with DMT, you know, he says quite ser seriously and groundedly that he's changed and he's found himself around, you know, people that maybe someone has died, there's a funeral or something coming up. And his instinctive reaction might be to laugh and he's you know at times he's had to contain his reactions so i can completely when i heard i can completely relate to that it's not that i find death funny 
it's that my perception of all of these things has totally broadened and changed my awareness and insight of what's unfolding has changed and it doesn't fit the societal uh, what's acceptable you know what we put in the newspapers or we put on the on the tv as i've said a number of times and i've, I've posted you know my own quote on instagram stories is that anytime we think there is a problem it's merely a lack of our own awareness of what's unfolding. We tighten up. We literally physically tense. Then the ego's role is to keep us comfortable, to keep us supposedly safe in the familiar. So the ego kicks in and it tries to manage and contain the situation. Now, I try not to live like that as much as possible. And with that comes taking responsibility. So yes, some, some of these situations I find comical, if not a lot of them, to be honest. Uh, so sometimes it's, it's genuinely laughter. It's funny. It's, it's, like, it's like listening to a comic, a comic sketch, you know, people lining up to buy disinfectant and toilet rolls and whatever it may be in panic. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but listen, that's just me. I could be dead in a week you know, because of the coronavirus, or I could infect loads of people and have that on my conscience or whatever. Who knows what's unfolding? So to, 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 to try and get some structure to whatever the fuck I'm saying, personally, my guidance, and, and I did some journey on my own work last night for about four hours, and my guidance really is to, to, to really fucking double down on my own presence. I'm, I'm seeing layers and layers of depth of being in a human body and on, on earth you know and as i've said before that it's it's like being on a boat on top of the ocean and i might say to you are you connected to the ocean and you'd say yeah obviously i'm in a boat on the ocean but you might not be because you could be in your mind and you could be thinking about this beautiful woman or this beautiful food or being at home warm in bed or watching a movie you might not be present and conscious with being on the ocean so if i drag you 10 feet under the water you're going to have a very different experience and again you could be panicking you could be trying to get out because it's unfamiliar and if i drag you four miles underwater again you have the potential and the op opportunity for a very different experience so i really am seeing layers and layers of depth that i ha had never experienced before and never seen before of what it's like to be in a human body, to be on earth. So my perception of earth and of people and of the coronavirus and these things is very different from what it would have been, you know, in recent months or years. Uh, so that's my guidance. My guidance is to be within me, really be present. I know this isn't give if you if you're hysterical and you're looking for me to tell you to fucking buy toilet rolls <laughs> you're 14 minutes into the wrong video <laughs> there's probably fucking thousands of videos out there about this so how do we know what to do then how do we know do i buy fucking a car full of toilet rolls and disinfectant and i'll tell you very simply how to know be present Tune into your body, take responsibility, and spirit knows you'll be guided where you're best supposed to be. Now, for me, it comes back to that cylinder. When the volume gets turned up and when the shit hits the van, things slow down and they get clunky when we move into the mind, when we panic. So if coronavirus is spreading, or if there's terrorists or school shootings or any of these things, when the volume and the intensity increases, the last place I want to be is in my mind, trying to manage the situation. I want it to be as harmonious and smooth uh, and peaceful as possible. These days, my aim, and it's not related to, consciously anyway, it's not related to the coronavirus. I don't really have much interest in that at all. I'm not, I'm not paying much attention to it. My guidance is quite simply to be grounded, to be in my body and take responsibility then for what may unfold. So I live in my car. 
I can't, um, <laughs> what's the word, quarantine myself. I can't even wash my hands repeatedly. I have to use public toilets. I have to go to shops every day to buy food. I can't store food. Uh, I don't need to store toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an anomaly in this whole situation. But the odds are I would pick it up, you know, quicker than most people, perhaps, because I am i can't not be in society. But I'm okay with that. Um, it, it is what it is. It's going to unfold. My prior, priority, right, and I can really feel this energetically right now in my core and in my heart area and behind my eyes, my priority is my relationship with my own being it's not to get rich it's not to fall in love it's not to beat the coronavirus or not get the coronavirus my priority is me is my relationship with me am i emotionally uh, connected and supported supporting myself am i at home with myself am i bringing home whatever the continual frequency of consciousness is presenting to me which is cues of people for toilet paper or traffic jams or no traffic are my parents going to get sick are my parents going to die they're they're getting older am i going to get sick it doesn't matter Th these can be thoughts actually so it's it's what i witness if i flick through those radio stations if i open instagram or twitter and i see you know a news feed about x number of people died or infected or flights cancelled or whatever it may be if i can be the cylinder as much as possible and be present you know what, what i have discovered over the last few days is a deepening peace as well so it's interesting, you know, as the world and as those around me at times become more and more uneasy and fearful, I'm finding actually a deeper peace. You know, yesterday I was up Kalini Hill and in Dublin and there was very strong winds, but the sun was beaming and there's buds on the trees coming through for spring. It was a great, great place to be. This was a great experience. It felt good. <laughs> you know, these are the... This is in the present moment. This is life. And I understand that this doesn't, this message doesn't uh, satisfy a lot of people. You know, Eckhart Tolle talks about the pain body. The pain body is an addiction. It wants food. It wants drama. The next school shooting, terrorists. What disease is it now? How many people have died? <laughs> oh my God, the schools are closing. Better disinfect everything. I just don't, I don't subscribe if possible i'm not above this of course you know wait let's wait and see what happens i could be leaving you a video in a week or two saying i have the virus my family are all dead and i am dying you know i don't know who knows what's going to unfold but for me my guidance is and it just feels it's best to be grounded in the present moment allow the frequency to, fl to flow through so right i'm not saying if you're panicked i'm not saying calm down calm down is good i'm saying get the fuck out of your mind the mind is of, of little use here uh, if you feel panic and fear about your kids or your parents or yourself or whoever observe that in the body really honor that you know really be the cylinder be present and witness that because i guarantee you underneath that there's other things there's other emotions of your own fallibility and fear or maybe lack of relationship with yourself so for me you know uh, the course the eight-week course i have of shadow integration came from around two or three years ago at the start of the year that I thought that I was dying in my car. I had chest infection, sinus infection. I had 10 verrucas over the heels of two feet. I had athlete's foot and I had anemia, among other things. And this had lasted about three weeks and I was just deteriorating. And over the space of a couple of nights, I had what looked like uh, flashbacks or visions and it was like observing my own death i thought uh, and, and in those moments up until that point i had thought ah this will pass you know life will move on i'll make money i'll fall in love i'll buy a house I'll blah 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 and in those moments i realized oh maybe i don't get through this maybe i'm actually going to die you know in the coming days in this car and i had to face that and in those moments i you know i realized that if that was the case i needed to make peace with myself 
I needed to be at home with who I am and my experience in my life if I'm going to die. So for me, and the potential coronavirus or whatever it may be, uh, that's where I still am. My priority is my relationship with me and being at peace with me. If I go out there into the news stories and the panic, I'm abandoning how I'm feeling. I'm abandoning myself. Now, I can understand that there, I can, I totally respect people that will say, but I have to go and buy the toilet paper or the disinfectant or whatever it may be. I totally get that and I res totally respect that. I understand that. But that, that direction can come from a different place. In, in the groundedness and in the peace, you know, so when, when I went through that kind of near death vision or experience, gradually, you know, over the coming month or so, I sat with myself every night and I, and I felt and observed the pain, the grief, the shame of, of having failed, thinking I had failed as a man, that I hadn't achieved these things. I hadn't the woman, I hadn't the fucking car, I hadn't the money and all that stuff, all that shit that I wanted to be my identity. But in that stillness and healing came guidance, insights, came, you know, a, a healing of my own immune system. So in that calm and groundedness, and the calm and groundedness is on the other side of the panic and fear, if we can connect to it. If we're up in the mind, up in the mind is not connecting to the emotion. It's just the ego trying to get comfortable. It's trying to find a solution. And it's also the addiction to the pain body. It's addicted to adrenaline, terror, fear, anxiety, chemicals. All these chemicals burn out the nervous system. So if we can sit with the emotion and feel it, feel it in our bodies and honor how we feel, not try to, try to change it or get rid of it, there, it'll settle and there's guidance. Get on the road. Quarantine. I don't know. I have no idea what you'll be guided to do. But I'll finish on this, that for me, I, yeah, I'm being guided more and more into the present, but I'm also being guided to look at accommodation for travel. So while we have airports shutting down and countries trying to stop people traveling, I'm seeing the prices of flights drop and of accommodation in places that I've been kind of guided to visit that have good energy for me. So I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, okay, will I lose my money? Will I get to travel at all? Do I want to travel? And just sitting with all this and seeing what feels right and again, I'll take responsibility. If I get in a plane and I land in a country and I die of coronavirus, well, that's that's life. Comes back to Domingo's expanded perception that I see all this a lot different now. It just is. It's unfolding. Whatever we resist or panic about, we tense up and we draw in more of that experience so as I st said at the start of this video, that halfway down your thighs to open all the way up and allow all that frequency to pass through as you see your kids or the traffic or your coffee or whatever it may be, as you hear my, <laughs> my romantic voice, whatever it may be, or as you're pissed off because I haven't given you any fucking insights or statistics of where it came from and what we're supposed to do. So you honor all these feelings. This is the present moment. This is what we're here to do. And this is what's unfolding. The, the work does not go out the window just because there is a terrorist or a virus or whatever. We fall in love. We don't fall in love. The check bounces. It doesn't matter. We, we continue to observe the frequency to be present. So if you got this far, thanks for listening. Honor who you are. Feel what's passing through you. Be present with what's passing through you. That's, that's our only role. In those moments, there are guides. We will be guided intuitively to care for ourselves or other people or not because maybe there is no risk. I don't know. So also what I'd just like to say is that we've all known people, say, who have invested in property, you know, or stocks and shares or oil, or I used to invest, I used to buy and import gold and physical gold and silver. 
But there are people who do these things and who make a lot of money. There are also people who do these things who don't make any money. Why is that? It's because of what they're creating. So you can disinfect yourself all you want and you can quarantine all you want. And I guarantee it, there'll be people who do this, who lock doors, who are germaphobes and have everything disinfected to fuck. But they'll still get the virus, perhaps. And you'll have people who smoke 60 cigarettes a day and who are sitting in the pub drinking and who ramble around however they want and they won't get the virus. Or maybe they get it and it doesn't even fucking affect them or bother them. It depends what we're creating what we're manifesting, where our energy is going, to be in tune with that. That's that's my take. So it's something to keep in mind. Anyway, thanks for listening. I'll leave some links below and be well, be present. <laughs>